the Clumsy Stitcher here on YouTube and over on Instagram. This is my channel all about cross stitch, so I show you updates and ongoing projects, any haul I may have bought, any new starts, etc, etc. So if you're a fan of cross stitch, or even if you're not, I'm hoping you'll find something here that you like. To those of you who are first time viewers, a very warm welcome to you. To those of you who are returning, thank you very much for coming and spending some more time with me. This is my May wrap up video where I'll show you everything I've worked on in May. It is the 31st of May I'm filming this. It's a bank holiday here in the England. Um, it's an actual sunny day, which seems miraculous after the May that we've had. I think we had snow at one point. It was just a bit crazy. Uh, for those of you who watched my last video, you'll know it's only the one project. But for those of you who, are what this, if this is your first video you're watching of mine, um, I'll just wrap up very, very quickly. I decided to do Monogam May, where you only stitch on one project for the whole of May. And the project that I decided to work on was this one. It is Cabin Fever, and it's part of the Dimensions Gold collection. So I think a very good project to start in May. It's absolutely gorgeous. Um, but before I show you, because it is just the one project, I figured I should probably waffle on a little bit first. Um, before I show you how far I got, I just thought I'd um, summarise my monogamy experience, if any of you might be interested in doing it next year. So it was more difficult than I thought it was going to be, actually. Until last September, I was always a monogamous stitcher, so I had my, in my previous finishes video, you, I don't know if any of you remember the lighthouse I had, the Aurora Cabin Dimensions Gold uh, piece that I worked on as well. So when I was working on them, they were the only pieces I would ever work on. And then last February, I started my Margarita Dragon piece, and until September, that was the only piece I worked on. But then I entered the world of floss tube and found all of these cross stitch accounts on Instagram and was immediately enabled and I'm now on 10 projects I think. So it was weird going back to only stitching on one project. I am grateful that I did it because I was able to make a lot more progress than I obviously would have been able to otherwise. Um, but it did have its kind of downsides as well I suppose. Um, it felt a bit weird restricting myself uh, it felt a bit, if I wanted to work on something else and just telling myself no felt a little bit strange. There were also instances where, because it's been a very busy month for me with work and wedding planning, um, this is quite a, it's one of the more complicated projects I think I'll be working on because there's lots of blended threads, mixture of half stitches, full cross, um, sorry I should explain, blended threads are where instead of just using one strand of the same colour, you're picking up two different colours. Um, and, and it's like, with the dimensions kits especially, I've found it's not just two threads, it's like you've got mixtures of like five strands, four strands, two strands. It's a bit, not all over the place necessarily, but you just have to, I have to pay quite a lot of attention to what I'm doing. Um, something else I found a bit bizarre as well is going back to a paper chart because I've been using Pattern Keeper for so long now because I've used it on all of my projects basically. Um, going back to a paper chart where it doesn't highlight the symbol I'm currently working on meant it was a little bit more time consuming because I was having to keep double checking that I'd uh, picked up all of the, all of the um, stitches that I had to in that area on the one colour. Um, you will also see later in my haul section that it's a little bit longer than usual because I was just working on the one piece but I was still watching as much floss tube as I could um, and because I couldn't, because I wasn't changing projects in my head for some reason it just meant I had to buy loads of stuff and I'm not quite sure why um, but I have, I did end up buying more than I would have plan to, um, which I'll obviously show you a little bit later. So pros are I got to work on a really good project for a whole month. I think part of it as well is I didn't have as much stitching time as, like, as I wanted. So for example, in the last week, I haven't stitched at all, um, which is a bit sad. It's just been, it's just been incredibly busy really. And I think 
in previous weeks as well where it's been incredibly busy um, but I have had stitching time because this pattern's a bit more complicated I wasn't rushing to stitch because um, I knew I'd have to engage my brain whereas stitching has now become a way for me to escape thinking and not worry too much about stuff so it was a little bit counterintuitive as soon as I started stitching it was fine but for some reason I put up this barrier in my brain that it was going to be more complicated and so I didn't want to do it as much I don't know it was a bit weird um because I have enjoyed stitching on it so much and I think I was just I don't know I guess I was just overthinking it a little bit I suppose um, I have found actually since starting this floss tube I am overthinking my cross stitch a lot more and I think I do need to just sink back into it and just do what I want to do and not worry about content production or anything like that so uh, we'll, uh, it's been, it, has, it has been a good month though, I, um, I'm not bemoaning it or anything. So that's enough waffle I think surely, um, it's now time to update you on progress. So I've still been keeping it in my project bag that I made, which I absolutely love still. So pleased with those fabrics. This is my progress. So we've got a good chunk of the cabin. I think I was hoping to get the whole cabin done in May, if I'm honest. Um, if I just show you. So I've got the front with the pier and then I'm just starting on that top window in the chimney and I've got the bit underneath as well. So there's still a fair bit of stitching to do around here. But at the end of the day, you can only do as much as you can do. I just absolutely love the colours. And I love, I know I was saying the blended threads make it more complicated, but I just think the effect is absolutely incredible. So yeah, I think what I'm going to keep doing, I don't know how, because obviously I've been working on this for a whole month now, and I don't want it to be put away and then not worked on for another three months. Um, so I would like to keep kind of continuing around here. So yeah, this is, this is my May. So on my last video, a few of you mentioned that you'd come over from Amy's channel, which is the Globe Trotting Stitcher. So I went and had a look, um, would absolutely recommend her channel. I think she talks about her projects so well and they're all so gorgeous. And the reason that she'd shouted me out in the end is because I'd enabled her to get the Aurora Cabin kit and the Cabin Fever kit. And I've not knowingly enabled anyone before. And it's this really odd feeling of kind of happiness, but also a little bit of guilt, because I just really want Amy to enjoy these projects, because um, they are so much fun. And I think they're just so effective. I think the design is gorgeous and yeah, I just think they're really worth it when they're hanging up and I, I can't wait to finish it. Um, and I know I am miles off, but I can't wait to have it hanging up. Um, I think, because with my Aurora Cabin, so obviously you have all the blended threads and all the cross stitching and it's a full coverage piece for the whole, apart from like little bits in the, like these windows, for example, where they've not got any, where they've just got gaps. And then there's a lot of back stitching and on my Aurora cabin piece, I did all the stitching and then I did all the back stitching because I thought that was the order that you had to do it in. And so now having watched a lot of floss tube where people do back stitch as they go, I am wondering whether I want to do that, but I also don't want to crush the back stitching. So we'll have to see. Um, because I feel like the cat, once you finish the cabin and done a little bit around the outside, it's something that you could fully backstitch. But then I kind of want to get all the colours in. So we shall see. But yes, I am excited to keep going with that one. And thank you very much to Amy for shouting me out on her channel. 
actually while talking about um shout outs i also want to mention a couple of other channels uh, who've mentioned me recently um firstly was pat stitching on youtube um she had some very kind comments and i've gone back and uh, subscribed and watched a few of her videos now she has some really really lovely projects and um i've already favorited a couple on etsy i think that's just what it is on the floss tube community is just a constant cycle of enabling and i I love it, but my bank balance doesn't really. <laughs> um, someone else who's mentioned me recently is Megan at Georgia Girl Stitching. She made me laugh actually because she said her mum mentioned my channel to her um, and said that she had a British twin. <laughs> and that just made me chuckle because um, we're both getting married quite soon. And so obviously dealing with that alongside work and trying to stitch and catch everybody up as well. So... Thank you very much to those channels for mentioning me and I hope you go and check them out as well. I know um, Megan's obviously got a huge following and uh, her projects are, well, she's inspired me previously with my Merry and Bright that I've shown before as well. So uh, yeah, definitely recommend, recommend them. Now I will move on to a haul, which will then feed into plans. Um, I'm not quite sure where to start with haul. It isn't like I, I, it's not like I've got loads of stuff, but it's just, I think it's the most I've shown. Um, I think I was just a bit impulsive this month, if I'm honest with you. There are projects I've been looking at for a while and I just thought, you know what, stop staring at them and just get them. So what I will do actually is I'll start with the, the project that started this trend. The I mentioned these last time actually in my April wrap up. I bought the Halloween Quaker by Leela's Studio. Um, I've just got a PDF, so I'll pop a picture up here so you can see the design. I've seen this being stitched on um, a few people's channels. Uh, the main one being Michelle, who's Michelle Bendy on YouTube and Instagram, and I'm sure you all know who she is. Um, she was doing, she's been working on it. It was her oldest work in progress, um, and so she was determined to finish it this year. So she was doing 25 seven, um, where you stitch for, I think it's either you put 25 stitches in or you stitch for 25 minutes on that project every day. And she's finished it recently. And as soon as she finished it, I was just, oh, you know what? Just get it, just get it. Um, cause it just looks absolutely fantastic. So I bought Halloween Quaker and then a day later, Leela Studio sent me a coupon because I'd spent, I'd bought something in her shop and so I got a coupon. And so I was like, oh, well that means I can just get a holiday Quaker as well then. And so I'll put a picture of that up as well. And so I just got that too, um, because I knew I wanted to stitch that anyway. I just thought I'd get a Halloween Quaker finished before I moved on to that one, but um, may as well just have it in the inbox ready to go. So, because I knew I wanted to stitch Halloween Quaker as soon as possible, I did get everything. I fully kitted that up. Um, so I will show you what I got. So the called for fabric is 40 Count Murky by Picture This Plus. Um, and, but I've been, I've been checking for a long time uh, as to its availability and it's been out of stock for a while. So I decided to just try and find an alternative. I really liked the um, kind of underlying colour of the murky. And so I found this. This is 40 Count Morel by Sparklies. Um, I think it looked comparable from pictures I saw online. It is a bit darker, it's a bit more yellow toned, I think, than what it's showing up as. Um, but I think it will work really well. And so I got all of the over dyed floss as well. And this is actually, so this is the first fancy floss I've ever used. So I got classic colour works. Oh, I don't know if that's fancy. Over dyed floss. Um, so this, yeah, this will be the first over dyed floss I will ever use. Um, so I'm really excited. That's one of the reasons also I wanted to get out. I was really excited. So I'm just organizing them a little bit because it's got all a bit messy. Bear with me one second. Yeah, there we go. So I think they all stand out on it really well. 
I just love all these colours. I'm sorry, it's all a bit messy over there. So it's all classic colour works, a bit of DMC. So that's all of them. I can never hold these up well enough. I hope you get the idea. Um, so yeah, really excited to start that. Um, I'm really pleased with this. Uh, yeah, really, really pleased with this linen as well. Because I was worried it was going to be too dark, but I think it might actually work quite well. I then, so I also, I placed an order with, sorry, I should have said, the Sparkly's fabric I bought from Patchwork Rabbit, which I'll link down below. Uh, then a month or so ago, I ordered a couple of fabrics from Chromatic Alchemy, which is where I'd got my, um, the previous fabrics I've shown, it's where I got them from for my hands-on design Pinwheel Perennials series, which I think I showed in my first flush tube. Um, so the reason I bought some more fabric from Chromatic Alchemy, firstly, in my last video, I mentioned how I really loved um, Julie's uh, Kansas City Girl and a Colorado World's colour choices for the Modern Folk Embroidery Stitch Along this year. Um, and so I was trying to emulate that in one of my Ink Circles pieces. So I have got this colour, um, which is called June. I got it a 32 count. And on the picture it looked a lot warmer it looks a lot, the brown tones were a lot more kind of sandy rather than grey. So I'll still find a use for this, I'm sure, because I also thought this could work quite well for um, the Halloween Quaker. And the only reason I'm hesitating a bit is because I wanted to stitch it on 30 count and this is a 32. But if I change my mind about that, then this could work quite well. Oh, I've got to stop staring at it because I keep changing my mind. Ooh. Um, I'm sure I'll find something else for this though, uh, because I don't think I'm going to use it for the ink circles one anymore, because I did really want kind of earth tones. And then, um, this, well, there's a little bit of a story, I suppose. So we're getting married um, in July and both of us really love to play the Zelda games. And I found a pattern, which is Zelda and Link sitting together, holding like little games controllers um, and like the wires join underneath and they say it's dangerous to go alone or it's dangerous to play alone. Um, and I wanted to do that as a little wedding piece. Um, and so I was never going to have time to stitch it before the wedding. Um, the week after the wedding, we're because we're getting married in Cornwall, where I'm from, we're staying in Cornwall for that week and as a little mini honeymoon, mini break. Um, so I thought I could just start it that week. So for that piece, I bought this piece of linen, which is Glacier. Oh, it's showing up quite bright blue. It's not quite as, that's probably the best I'm gonna get it. It is a bit more turquoisey. Um, but it's just absolutely glorious. So that will be for my like honeymoon wedding piece. For the last three months, I have been growing steadily more and more in love with the Frosted Pumpkin Stitcheries Cozy Cafe menu um, stitch along. So it's a mystery stitch along and they've released now three clues. Um, and I fell in love with it as soon as I saw the first one, but I was a bit hesitant because obviously mystery, you want, I, want to be able to, I want to be able to keep up with the stitch along and um, I had quite a lot of other stuff going on. But then the more it's grown, the more I've just been staring at it convincing myself that I would love to work on it and so again I just bit the bullet it was a bit impulsive and got the pattern so I'll link I'll show a picture of what's currently been released like I say there's been three clues um I then got the linen this is a fabric flare 
in the colourway Café au lait. And it's 32 count. So it's a really pale brown, mottled brown. I got this from Lakeside Needlecraft. And I'd not used fabric flare before because obviously you've got the, like the mottled side, but then it's printed on. So that's, I find that quite interesting. I didn't realize, I just, the things we can do. Um, and so I got all of the, um, I'm using all the called for DMC. And so this is the DMC for that, this project and um, the Zelda and Link project. I got those from a mixture of Lakeside Needlecraft and Peakside Needleworks. And one of the other reasons I wanted to work on this project is because it has beads and I've never used them before. So I was really, I just thought, well, if I love the pattern and I want to work with beads, I can give it a go. So this pattern calls for four different colours of Mill Hill beads. And the first one is... Oh, it's not got the colour on. I think, it, I guess 03058 is the colour. So a little red one, which I've seen in the raspberry of the first drink already. 03038, it's a little brown one. I'm sure they have much more um, fancier colour names than I'm giving them. Uh, some little grey ones. Which is 03009. And then 03050. I'm pretty sure these were called champagne or something. So those are all the beads. But because I've never beaded before, and because I needed to get a beading needle, which I couldn't find on the website, I just thought, as training, I should get a Mill Hill kit, beaded kit, um, as like a practice run, and so I could get a beading needle. And so I bought this little snowflake kit, beaded holiday. Which actually now, now that I've seen it, and now that I've um, looked at all the contents, I think it was actually more of a trial by fire. Because <laughs> um, these are all the beads. Um, but this will go on our tree very nicely at Christmas, so uh, just thought I'd give it a go. So that is all my haul, which takes me into plans. And in my last video, I said that as soon as anything gets announced on a floss tube video, you know for a fact it's never going to happen. But I'm going to announce this on my floss tube video, and we're going to hope that it happens because this is my plan, and I like to have a plan. So I am currently stitching Hello Pumpkin by Caterpillar Cross Stitch with Emma and Joe with the hashtag hello pumpkin what time do you cow this so i have to catch up with may's section and then do june's um i'm now obviously also doing the frosted pumpkin stitchery uh, because i really want to start that because i yeah because i want to catch up and i want to be able to keep going with it um so i need to start that this week i'm also got the hello sunshine tree from caterpillar cross stitch as well so that clue was released a couple, the first, sorry, the first section was released like two days ago. And there are some people that have already finished it. Uh, uh, just I, some people's speed in cross stitching is just so impressive. So um, I want to get started on that. So I, so I have a fighting chance of keeping up. And I've also started the Hello Petal Tree, which they didn't release, which is again, Caterpillar Cross Stitch. They didn't release it as a stitch along. It's very much a go at your own pace kind of thing. But because I'm working on the Hello Pumpkin tree and the Hello Sunshine tree, I don't want Hello Petal to just be lagging behind. I don't want it to have to be something I feel like I have to do to finish the set. I want to be working on all these trees at the same time so I can have them all finished at the same time so I can just finish them all together at the same time. And so for the month of June, I think I'm going to have, so bearing in mind it's the run up, we've got four weeks until or five weeks till our wedding. So I don't know how much time I have available because work is still really busy. Um, so I think I'm, the month of June will be Sarah's stitch along month. 
where she just focuses, where, oh, sorry, she, I'm talking about myself on the third person thing now, where I focus on my Hello Trees and my Frosted Pumpkin Citri. And then July, I'm already thinking ahead now. I wanna do Christmas in July, because I've got a few Christmas projects that I'd love to get some stitches into. However, I'm also very aware that I set myself a goal for my Margarita Dragon of reaching, I think was it 35%? Um, and this was before I started getting all of these new projects. Um, but I would love to be able to get as close to that as possible. Um, but I think I've, I've calculated it and I think it means doing 1500 stitches a month on that project as well. Which may be attainable, but I have not attained it so far this year. So, and now I'm picking up all these new things. I don't see how it's going to get any easier, but priorities because there's no point in getting sad about it if I keep choosing to work on other projects. So I'm going to have that in the back of my mind, but I think we'll just see how we go. I keep trying not to plan too much because I know I'll just get disappointed. <laughs> but this is all I have to say this month. I hope it's been okay. I am. I just. I feel like I have just been talking uh, this whole time. So sorry that you only got to see the one project. I'll show it again just for good measure. Da, 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 da. And oh, I just want to keep working on it, but now I'm just like, who knows when I'm going to work on this again? Oh dear. Hopefully in June. I'll be able to show you my Hello Trees with quite a few more stitches in and my I'll be able to show you my start on my Frosted Pumpkin Stitch Tree. Fingers crossed. We shall see. We shall see how it goes. Who knows what's going to happen in the next month. I was thinking when I sat down that it feels like ages since I filmed, but then I can't believe it's June tomorrow. So time is definitely flying by. So we'll see how it all goes. I hope you've enjoyed this update. Thank you very much for watching. I will see you again next month. Bye.